The second point uh, is that um, the um, uh, is that the second point is that it's that it's even though it fed the flames of kind of uh, all this discussion about the quality of information on Wikipedia, it wasn't. You know, it didn't contradict the culture of Wikipedia. In fact, Jimmy Wales, the founder of Wikipedia, uh, would talk about how, how much it kind of uh, encompassed the values of Wikipedia, especially transparency and, and inclusiveness. So through, through this sort of use of the wiki scanner as kind of a meta tool, uh, Wikipedia has a number of its own tools and bots and all these things, but as a meta tool, uh, it would help ensure some of this transparency and also help ensure the inclusiveness of having everybody edit because rather than sort of excluding people from editing their own entries, uh, you, you just make sure that they're not editing, uh, making salacious edits or not making, um, uh, uh, in, or putting in incorrect information or deleting things. And, and this, of course, I would, I would go on to point out is that this very much fits into sort of the Wikipedia style of governance that's been there kind of since the beginning, which you can, I, which I think you can trace back to kind of like the uh, cyber libertarian um, uh, sort of politics that, that Alan's written a lot, a lot about, um, uh, which, which basically says that, you know, we use tools, not rules, right? Um, and that goes back to like, like chat rooms where instead of, you know, banning users, you would, you would, you would ignore users. So, um, so that those are the points that I would make about the wiki scanner, but also about research tools more generally, um, and 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 also our research tools have those methods built in. Um, okay, so this kind of uh, reflexivity. Number one, thinking about uh, how the objects of study um, kind of uh, can be, uh, how how these new objects of study can be made. Uh, can, uh, can be taken up, taken uh, taken up in new methods, um, as well as how these research tools are, are implicated uh, in the cultures that you're researching. Uh, th I feel like this can lead to, to sort of um, new productive uh, uh, avenues of research. And what I'm getting at is, is this idea of um, historicizing methods, um, and this is. Uh, really just, you know, taking account of the historical, the cultural specificity uh, that goes into uh, formatting the object of study as well as, you know, the means by which we, we analyze it. Um, and of course, this is not, it's, it's called a new question, it's not a new question, it's, uh, it's kind of the foundation of, of sociology of science and, and, and I think that it's also related to some really great recent work in media archaeology. I'm especially thinking of um, Lisa Geidelman's uh, book, Always Already Knew. Um, and so I think that this is uh, a productive avenue and, and even more uh, going back to this larger sort of traditional versus digital humanities debate, I think this is one of those sort of points in which we can uh, kind of see concerns overlap. Um, uh, but something maybe we can talk about later. Um, but so I'll, I'll kind of address this a little bit just through, uh, just got one more case and then uh, uh, that'll be it. Um, but it's, it's something we did last year. Uh, and again, it's, it's blogosphere related. I'm kind of in a tunnel vision when it comes to these things. But um, uh, it is, yeah, it's a work we did at the summer school last year. Uh, I got to lead a, a, a week of research um, and the first question was, was really, you know, okay, how can we, you know, where do we start? How does one do historical web research? Um, and how, how, how to then capture and analyze the early blogosphere? And we quickly realized that the, uh, the, the first question to answer was, was, you know, how to think through the role of the Internet Archive uh, and its interface, the, the Wayback Machine. Um, the Internet Archive um, is, was founded in uh, 1995, I believe, by Brewster Cowley in California. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, like it says, 150 billion pages. Um, it's, uh, 
incredibly useful tool. Uh, but again, it's uh, I would argue it's 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 format, right? Um, the uh, the first thing I won't go too much into into like how it indexes. That's uh, for another time. Um, but what you notice as a user of the Internet Archive uh, first is that you know you have a field just like you know, when you start up, start when you when your home page is Google, but in that field you don't put a search term, rather you put a URL, um, and what you then get um, is is your results page, um, which is a list of dates, uh, each of which uh, represents an archived version of the, the page you're looking for. And the ones with asterisks, they, they represent uh, changes. Changes have been made to that page. Um, and yeah, so one thing I would note about, about the way that Internet Archive and, and its interface is formatted is that it, it's, you know, its use, is, or the privileged use is, is that of, of, of doing a history of single sites. Uh, one of one of our projects, one of our first Internet Archive projects, was the history of the Google.com homepage, in which you it's the move. We've got a movie. Um, I could show it later if people are willing to stick around. We've got a movie called The Demise of the, the Directory, in which uh, you see Google's directory. They used to have one um, slowly disappear from its front page, from those tabs that are above the search box. Um, so, so the Internet Archive, in first instance, um, is kind of geared toward uh, single site histories, uh, which I guess you could compare to like a biographical approach in sort of, if you're thinking in historiography terms. Uh, the um, other thing I was going to mention is that, uh, oh yeah. Uh, but yeah, okay, so that's all I'll say about that now. The, the privilege use is this idea of the single site history. Another thing one notices uh, about uh, the Internet Archive is once you start looking through uh, these archive versions of pages, and once you start clicking, uh, you get something that I call these jump cuts. Um, so here we're looking, on the left, we're looking at the Eaton Web Portal, which was the first uh, directory of, of blogs on the web. Um, and uh, once you click on one of these links, uh, you move to say 120degrees.com, uh, and you can see in the URLs below, what you're doing is you're also moving through time. You're moving from here the 15th of August, the dates in the URL, to the 17th of August. So uh, one of the things that we notice about the Internet Archive then um, is that it privileges this idea of surfing as well. Um, whereas, you know, many historians might want, you know, something more accurate um, in, terms of, in terms of knowing that you kind of move through time. Um, the thing that I would say about this is that, again, this, I don't think this is just, you know, purely a result of practical or technological considerations, so much as a reflection of kind of some deep assumptions about the web as a medium from that time. So the Internet Archive, I think, uh, was built with during this, this time of the dominant metaphor being cyberspace, uh, and, and, and a space in which one should be able to seamlessly surf through. Uh, like what can I ask, do you know whether um, they are attempting to jump to the nearest date in the other archive site, or is it random? Or? No, it's, it's the nearest date, yeah. But that date could be, you know, two days or two years, depending on uh, how often the site is archived. And whenever it doesn't, uh, whenever it doesn't find an archived version, it will take you to the live web. So. Um, yeah. So another kind of historiographical approach that you see with the Internet Archive is in their special collections. Uh, they have a number of them, uh, starting with the 1996 elections. Uh, and and these you could you could say are, are more event based, um, and essentially what they are are um, collections of sites, editorial collections or lists of sites that are then archived from from a specific date.